paper, uh, I've taught uh, ancient history for more than 20 years and I've marked ancient history at the HSC. And um, I'm a member of the executive of the History Teachers Association of New South Wales. And what I hope to do in this session is to take you through the um, uh, HSC examination in ancient history and to give you some tips about how to approach the questions and some tips about effective revision. So uh, when you look at the structure of the paper, the four parts of the paper reflect the four parts of the syllabus. The first part, section one, um, relates to the core study, um, Pompeii and Herculaneum. Section two is your society's question. Uh, section three, the personality. Section four, the historical periods. The four sections are all worth 25 marks. So there's no point in spending more than a quarter of your three hours on any one section because you can't get more than 25 marks no matter how brilliant you are on that section and you may leave yourself short of time for the other three sections. So distribute your time um, evenly. You may pick up some time on one section or another but try to keep your eye on the time and allow 45 minutes for each section. Um, we look first of all at section one. Um, this is the core study. Uh, when you get the paper, you'll have the uh, section one will be stapled at the front with multiple choice and short answer questions together. And at the back is your source sheet for section one. So tear off the source sheet, pull off the source sheet, um, and you'll have it there to refer to when you're answering the questions on Pompeii and Herculaneum. You can see that part one is in, uh, section one is in two parts. Um, the first part has a combination of multiple choice and short answer questions, and the second part, part B, has a 10 mark uh, extended response question. Um, source based multiple choice questions worth one mark each, and short answer questions, which could be in from two marks up to eight marks. And each year this will vary, so don't worry about how many there are, just practice with the different types of questions, become familiar with those questions and writing the appropriate responses. Um, and the one source-based extended response in part B is constant. So you can go back to past papers and have a look at those questions, um, look at some um, uh, examiner's comments about those questions and they will all be relevant to that uh, extended response, the 10 marker. Um, for the multiple choice questions, which have only been in um, modern and ancient history since 2010, it's very easy to, um, to mark those questions. You simply fill in the response oval. You don't do it on a separate sheet, you do it within your answer booklet. For all the other questions, you answer in the space provided. And I know it's frustrating, especially with a topic like Pompeii and Herculaneum, where you know so much. Um, sometimes you've only got two or three lines to write a response, and you want to show the examiner that you know much, much more. Don't be caught out doing that. Read the question, plan your answer, write concisely with accurate information, um, and you can still uh, score the, into the top mark range. You don't need to write extra um, booklets for these short answer questions. With the multiple choice questions, um, don't be deceived into thinking that they are easy and I'm only going to spend um, half a minute on each of them. Take time to look at the sources, read the questions carefully and um, think about what, this, what these questions are testing because they can test your knowledge and they can also test um, important skills. You can look back uh, at the Board of Studies website to the 2010 paper and you can also look at the specimen section one and the History Teachers Association has put out a, a CD with sample section one questions on it which will all be helpful um, to, to help you familiarise yourself with the type of questions that can be asked. Remember with the multiple choice questions in ancient history and modern history is that they will ask you to use the sources and your own knowledge. All of the questions in this section can do that, the um, short response as well as the multiple choice. 
Some of the multiple choice questions can be answered directly from the source. Some of them will require you to have knowledge of the context of the source. And some questions may be based on a single source, and others may require you to consider information from more than one source. So you have to do some thinking. So don't ru rush through this section. Use your five minutes reading time at the beginning of the exam to look at these questions, look at the sources, so that when you do start the paper, um, you will have had uh, a little bit of preparation. Um, to give you some examples, this is a question um, from last year's paper uh, which requires you to know the term, the, the specific term for this um, source. Is it a fresco, a mosaic, a relief or a statue? And you simply colour in the response oval for the correct um, response. This question can't be answered directly from the source. It requires you to know something about the context. The source is a body cast from Pompeii, but to know who developed the technique for making that body cast requires you to have knowledge outside the source. So um, you would need to um, think about that. You can't pull the answer out of the source you bring your own knowledge to answer that one and the correct answer is um, C of course, Giuseppe Fiorelli. This question similarly uh, can't be answered from the source. You have to know where this source sits um, within the historic site and a little bit about the history of the source. So from your knowledge of life in Pompeii, what is the most likely reason for erecting the statue of Eumachia shown in source D? So that's another question where you need to be familiar with the context of the source. Ancient history is studied from a finite um, array of sources. It's a subject that can't be studied um, purely from a narrative that you read in a textbook. You have to be familiar with a range of sources in order to, to be able to do well in the subject.